I'll just let you all know right now. I'm just gonna be sniffling this entire time. I'm mega sick and uh there's there's no there's no change. It's I'm gonna be sniffling the whole time. Just let you know. Three, two, one, go. What's up everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the brothers Murph, and this is board game highlight. Board Game Highlight is a weekly segment where Mike or I take a game off the shelf behind us and we highlight it for you. And that's mostly us just getting a little bit into the gameplay, but it's mostly us talking about why we love it so much. And this Board Game Highlight was actually chosen by you on our Patreon, and you all chose for us to highlight, boom, Suburbia. Suburbia is one of our favorite games, and we love it so, so much. And this was like the first foray, at least personally for me, into like more like euro style games but this is the first time i played something that you could argue was like a little bit drier a little bit more just straight up euro -y than something like pandemic and from that day on it has been one of my favorite games i've always absolutely adored this game and i'm very excited to highlight it for you because it's one of my my favorite like subtly thematic games and i can't wait to talk about that and so we're going to talk about suburbia today i'm gonna highlight let's pop open the box let's get it out of the table and let's talk about why i love it so much all right, so this is the general layout for Suburbia here. Each player is gonna have their own burrow. There's gonna be a big scoreboard that is way too large in my opinion. And there's gonna be this whole thing which has a bunch of different tiles. I will say that we are going to fix this real quick. Gonna fix this real quick. I will say that we do have the Suburbia Inc. expansion, which is the first expansion coming out, and we do think that it is pretty essential. So I did wanna put that in the highlight. But the Suburbia expansion like doesn't change that much, and so me adding it to this board game highlight or adding the different elements really doesn't change that much in terms of explaining just the base game. The main thing that's different are these bonus and challenge tiles right up here, and then these borders. Other than that, the main thing is, is you just got a lot more of these normal tiles. But Suburbia is a game where you each have your own borough and you are essentially building out a suburb. The suburb of your choice, you know, living a better tomorrow today or whatever it says on the, the box cover, I don't know. But basically this is just suburbs. They're very boring and this game gets a lot of flack for the way it looks. And the way it looks is, is uh, pretty boring. The tiles themselves are like pretty like standard kind of like, like basic graphic design. No real colors, no real flair. And a lot of people give the game flack because of that. They go like, oh, the game is so ugly. And while it is ugly, but I am a constant defender of the look of this game. I love the look of this game. Now, I'm going to put out there right now because I know someone in the comments is going to ask, so hopefully they got this far into the video. Yes, we did back the new, brand new, big deluxe version of Suburbia on Kickstarter. But nonetheless, I actually really like the game because here's the thing about suburbs. Suburbs are ugly suburbs are plain suburbs are boring that's what suburbs are that's what they do so for this game to be like super beautiful and gorgeous and splashy doesn't actually make sense and don't get me wrong I kind of wish it looked better, but like I weirdly defend the, the the look of this game because I actually think thematically it makes sense but enough with that the game doesn't look great I know that so the basis of the game is that you're gonna be drafting these tiles by paying money, and then you're gonna be putting these tiles adjacent to other tiles in your burrow. There are a lot of tiles in the game. I have this set up for a two player game. So there's like, I believe between 12 and 14 tiles in each, the A, the B, and the C stack. So those are the tiles you use. In a two player game, you're not even using half the tiles. So there's a lot of variability and I'm not gonna go through and explain every single tile. That would be a waste of time. <laughs> You're right, Anthony, it would be. And so I'm not gonna go through all that, but I am gonna explain some of the tiles and, and talk about generally how the game works. Because one of the things I love about the game is just it's always interesting because all the tiles you place in your burrow are going to constantly play off each other and all these tiles have something special that they do and a lot of times they either want to be placed next to certain other tiles or don't want to be placed next to certain other tiles for various thematic reasons and one of the main things i love about this game is how thematic it actually is the game mechanics themselves are not that thematic that's not where the theme shines through like you're drafting tiles in this market here that doesn't like make you feel like a city planner like this is how city planners do it that's not how it goes putting stuff in your burrow and the way you build them isn't very thematic but the tiles themselves are incredibly thematic because every single tile 
gives you a benefit that makes sense for what that tile is. Because every single tile in the game has some kind of name. Like you start off, this is wrong, you start off with a heavy factory, a community park, and suburbs. Makes sense, it's suburbia. And each of the tiles will give you usually one or two of four things. They will give you income. Income is represented by this circle part on the top of your little borough board. Income means every single round you're gonna be getting that much money, which you then use to buy tiles. Another one denoted by this black square will give you reputation. This is the reputation of your suburb. And you want your reputation to be as high as possible because the higher your reputation at the end of every single round, whatever your reputation is, that's how many new people are going to move into your suburb. And at the end of the game, whoever has the highest population, which is points, wins the game. And then some tiles will just straight up give you population, which is represented by this snaking track here. And then some tiles will just straight up give you money. But that's pretty much all they do. They give you income, reputation, money, or population. And that's pretty much it. But the way they all work together and the way you have to plan things out is really, really fun and always makes sense. And that's why I love it. Because each tile will usually give you something, but then it also may have negative effects on it if it's placed next to something else, or if there's another one of those tiles in your burrow, or maybe even in someone else's burrow. So let's look at the three basic tiles we have. First of all, we have a suburb, and you can see in this little person meeple thing right here, it gives you plus two people. That is the, the um, iconography for population. So a suburb just gives you two people. It makes sense, people live in that suburb. But the suburb is basic, it just gives you that. It doesn't have anything else on it. It doesn't really care where it is in your borough. It just is like, hey man, I have a suburb right here. We got houses, we got kids, we got family, we got hoses and we got water fights. You know, typical white people suburban stuff. But the next one here, we have a civic park. A civic park you see gives you negative one income because parks don't generate any money, but it'll give you plus one reputation for each adjacent yellow, green, or blue building. And that makes sense. Everyone likes parks. They don't give you any money, but just people generally enjoy parks. So everyone wants to be near a park. Green buildings, which are usually housing buildings, want to be next to parks. Blue buildings, which tend to be like office building, workspaces, things like that, like general business stuff, also want to be near parks. And then yellow buildings, which tend to be like industrial stuff, also want to be near parks. And the last one here is a yellow and we have a heavy factory and this gives you plus one income because factories give you income, but it's negative one reputation for each brown building, which generally tends to be like civic centers or like public buildings. And then negative one reputation for each green building it's next to. And again, that makes sense because what don't you want right next to your house? A big loud factory. And so you can already see how, where you put stuff in your suburb, where you put stuff in your borough, matters it really matters because certain things want to be next to other things and certain things do not want to be next to other things at all that was good moves right there i like that and that's so fun and that's so interesting and and every single tile makes sense for what it gives you and for why it wants to be placed where it is. And that's where the theme shines through. It's subtle, it's not like brimming with theme, but as you play, you're like, oh, this makes sense. Okay, cool, this makes sense. Okay, cool, this makes sense. And that's just so much fun. And then on top of that, the game is always different. It's always completely different because again, there are a ton of tiles in the game, especially once you add the Suburbia Inc. expansion. And then on top of that, you don't know which ones are gonna come out in which order. And so as you draft tiles, you're gonna be buying these different tiles. Each tile has an amount that it's worth. And then depending on where it is in this line, you may have to pay more and more money for it. So if you really want, for instance, this municipal airport before someone else can get it, you're gonna have to pay an extra $10. So the order they come out in is always different. And that kind of variability is great because you're always having to build your burrow in different ways. And then on top of that, one thing I love is everyone's burrow in that one game will look totally differently just in the way it's built. Because you build this, you're like, I'm gonna build this here for this reason, I'm gonna build this one over here, and then I'm gonna build here, and then I'm gonna build these two over here for this reason because of the way that the tiles work out you just don't build it in a very like uniform way and then Mike's over here may look completely different his whole thing may go out on a diagonal like this just because that's how things worked out mine may be this big wavy one that totally works it doesn't really matter it just depends on what's advantageous for you 
in terms of placing tiles. And while that's not a big like part of the mechanics of like the way your burrow looks by the end of it, it's something that I always find fascinating. I love at the very end of the game, always just looking around at everyone's burrow and just seeing the way it took shape, seeing the way that it, it was built and was conceived. And then something that's in the Suburbia Inc. expansion is these borders. These borders, you can see, have little cutouts for the tiles, and you can get one of these borders and put it anywhere you want. Now, you can't put something here, and you also can't put something on this side, so then it's really gonna change the way your barrel works, because you can then build this way, but then basically everything else up here is completely cut off, and these, Borders are all different and they all do different stuff. They want to be next to different things. And so it just is always a fascinating thing to see everyone's little world get built. So when everyone's turn, you're going to draft and pay for a tile, put it somewhere in your suburb and then adjust everything. Your income may go up or down. Your reputation might go up and down. You know, you have to pay for stuff. All these different things are constantly kind of changing in your borough. And then at the end of the round, you get your income, whatever your income is at, you get, that's your base income for that turn. You get that money and then you go up population. And as you go up population, you see that there are these red lines that are all over the scoreboard, the population board here. And that's also one of those beautiful, awesomely thematic things about this game. Because every single time you pass one of these red lines, your reputation and your income go down one. And that happens because this is the population of your suburb. And what do people want their suburbs to be? They want their suburbs to be small, safe, intimate, nothing big. They don't want to be in a big city. That's why they moved to the suburbs. So as your population grows, your suburb gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So one, it takes more and more money to keep that suburb alive. So your income goes down. And as you get more people, your reputation goes down because as your suburb gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it becomes less desirable for people to move there because it's more and more like a big city. And that's not what people in the suburbs want. And so you constantly have to combat this, which is interesting because your income and your reputation can only go up to 15. So you think like, okay, once I'm at 15, I'm good to go. But you're not because you're constantly getting hit down and hit down and hit down and you have to build it back up. So throughout the game, even when you're an hour into the game, you're still having to build up and build up and build up any hit down, any build up, any build up, any hit down. And again, that's so thematic. That makes sense. It's subtle, but it's awesome and wonderful i love that and that's the basis of the game you are drafting tiles putting them in here adjusting stuff and trying to get as much population as possible and i'm gonna wrap this little rules talk to talk about some of the tiles and talk about exactly how they interact with each other so that you can understand a little bit of the gameplay in terms of where you put stuff and all that. So here we have an international airport. You get plus one income and reputation for each other airport in the game, and then minus one reputation for each adjacent green tile. And you get plus one income and plus one reputation for every airport, whether it's in your borough or in someone else's borough. And that makes sense. The more airports, the more easy it is for everyone to get around the board. And so your income and your reputation goes up. But you know what you don't want next to an airport? suburbs people living there because all they're going to do is call you and complain about the noise all the time so you get negative one reputation if you decide to put that airport right next to people another one that affects other people's boroughs is the hotel you get one income and then you also get one population for every other green tile in the game not any of your own but other people's green tiles and that makes sense they are going to travel to your hotel to stay there. Your own people aren't, they live in that town, but other people will come there. We have something like the fancy restaurant. The fancy restaurant gives you plus three income, which is huge, but it gets negative one income for every restaurant built after that one. So it starts off at three income because restaurants can make a lot of money, but then anyone else, including yourself, who builds a restaurant makes your income go down one. And that also makes sense. If you're the only restaurant in town, you're getting a ton of business. But once another restaurant gets opened, your business will probably split to some degree. And then something that goes along with the restaurant, we have the slaughterhouse, which is minus two reputation, but then plus one income for every restaurant in the game. That makes sense. Those restaurants need food, so it gives you income, but no one wants a slaughterhouse in their borough. So it's negative two reputation because you're like, this is a beautiful place to live but there's a giant slaughterhouse over there. That is unattractive. And one thing that I actually love about the game is that it gets kind of real sometimes, where sometimes the tiles, again, always thematically make sense, but you're kind of like, 
ooh, that makes sense for like not a great reason. Like take the housing projects. The housing projects give you plus 10 population. That's instantly 10 points, but it's negative two reputation if it's next to any brown buildings, green buildings, or blue buildings. And that is kind of tough. One, because you get 10 people from that tile. That is an astronomical amount, but that's true to real life. Housing projects tend to be in very poor areas and they tend to pack people into them. And on top of that, people don't want housing projects in their area. It's unfortunate, but that does reflect reality. People in suburbs would not want a housing project there. So that one's kind of like, ooh, that kind of sucks. But thematically, it still actually totally makes sense. And then the most delightfully morbid one ever is the cemetery. The cemetery makes you lose two population and then you get one income for every adjacent green tile. Just straight up, you lose two people, two people died. And I think that's so funny. I think it's just such a funny way to do it. And then you wanna be next to people because those people are probably going to die. So that's how the game plays. It's just your drafting tiles, putting them in here, and then changing your income, your reputation, your population based off the buildings and the things that you build in your neighborhood. And I love it. I love it so much. I love the subtle thematic element. And that's pretty much it. Again, there's a couple things I didn't explain and I'm not going to because it's just not necessary, but the game is outstanding. And again, I'm sure someone in the comments is going to ask, so I'm going to go ahead and answer it now. Which one do I like better, this or Castles of Mad King Ludwig? I like this a lot better. And I just frankly think it's a better game. There's less confusion. I feel like it's more streamlined. There's less like little questions. There's nothing that bogs down like that, but that is gonna be it. That is why I love Suburbia. I love it so, so much. Please try it if you haven't. Down in the comments, let me know what you think of it. Do you like Castles of Mad Kid Ludwig more? Please make sure to like and share this video and please make sure to subscribe to our channel if you're new here. Welcome to the fam. Uh, we're the Bells Murph. We're weird. And until next time, you've been checking out Suburbia with me here on Board Game Highlight. Have a good one. Hello, I want to let you know that we have a Patreon and that you should check it out. There will be a button some, somewhere around here probably that you can click to help out the Brothers Murph. Click the Patreon. Do it. I also got to let you know that we're sponsored by Restoration Games and by Game Toppers. Go to GameToppersLLC.com to upgrade your game and experience. Look at that label. It's beautiful. Oh, do it. Do it right now. I hate you. I'm sorry. I love you. Bye.